What's up guys, Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a tool that allows you to add tapers to different objects inside of Rhino. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can access the taper tool either by going into the transform toolbar and looking for this option right here, or you can just type in a value of taper and hit the enter key. And so when you access the taper tool, what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to select an object that you want to taper. So in this case, we're just gonna select this one object, but notice how you could select multiple objects as well. And so from here, there's a lot of different ways that we can taper our object. For example, if we were to select the option for four point right here, what it's gonna ask us to do is give us a baseline that's where we're gonna start our taper. And then it's gonna ask for the start of our taper axis. So in this point, or in this case, it's gonna start at this point. Then the end of the axis is gonna be this point. Well, then I can set a start distance and an end distance like this. So what that's gonna allow me to do is that's gonna allow me to select where this tapers from and to. And so in addition, there's other options in here as well. So let's say that we were to select a different object like this one and run taper again. And so once you have the tool active like this, so let's say that I was to select this face right here as my taper object, notice how there's options in here for different things. So for example, so if I tap the F key to toggle flat, what it's gonna do is it's going to scale this or taper this um, kind of uni uniformly on the other end. If I tap the F key, Notice how it's just scaling it on the one axis right here or tapering it on the one axis. So if I tap the I key for infinite, if I turn infinite off, notice what this is gonna do is this is gonna taper it down, but it's going to give me a curve in here instead of a straight taper. So if you want something that tapers and doesn't curve, you wanna turn infinite off. So if you tap the R key for rigid, what that's going to do is that's going to maintain the structure of this object, meaning it's not gonna allow it to deform. So for an object like this, if you do this, right, then it's only going to kind of like shear this a little bit, but it's not actually going to bend it. And so this has all sorts of interesting applications. Like for example, let's say we wanted to take this object and taper it downward, so it was almost like a ramp. So what we could do is we could select it, run taper, and I'm gonna go ahead and select this point and this point, and then a point right here. But notice how I can use this in order to taper my object down like this. And so let's say that we were running this and notice how at the moment you're getting kind of a, you, you, it's not tapering it flat, right? Like this side is taller than this side. Well, if we were to undo this and run taper again, so let's just taper it right here like this. If we were to toggle the option for infinite off, so I'm gonna tap the I key and then run this, Notice how we are getting a little bit of a curve in there, but on the back side, it's actually flat on the other end. So what this is doing is this is maintaining that orientation over here so that we end up with a flat box right here. So those options are really going to affect the final result that you get. Another way that a lot of people use the taper tool is they use it to create an object like this one or take an object like this one. And then we could just find a central point up above like this, and then select somewhere on the edge but notice how we can use this in order to taper this around its central point like this. So you can use this to make objects that taper inward and outward um, inside a Rhino. All right, so one thing I will say about this tool is when you run it, there is like zero documentation that I can find about these different functions. So it's a little bit confusing um, when you first start, first start working with it. You do need to play around with those a little bit to get a complete idea of what this tool can do. Um, I think there's a lot more power in here, but I think it's kind of difficult to figure out because there's nothing that I can find telling me exactly what each one of these does. But overall, this is a very very powerful tool. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought and what you're using the taper tool for. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.